<laughs> what you meant to ask, Josh, was... <laughs> what I meant to ask is that what you do is you, you agree, then you ask a different question. Hang on, let me just what see if I'm in frame now. Oh, yeah. uh, the other one was, what a fantastic question. <laughs> Have you ever been in a conference where somebody keeps going, what a fantastic <laughs> question? And what, they don't answer they, anything. Then they don't answer anything. G'day, I'm Josh Keegan, and this is The Space Down Under. In October 2019, I met and interviewed Adam Gilmore, the CEO of Gilmore Space Technologies. Since that time, I have wanted to return to find out more about what's happening at Gilmore Space Technologies, but I wanted a bit of a different perspective. And thanks to the wonderful efforts of Michelle Gilmore, I was lucky enough to get a chance to interview Peter Kine in October 2021. Peter holds the title of the Head of Sales, and the timing on this one couldn't have been better. Peter was about to depart to the United Arab Emirates to represent both the Gilmore Space Technologies and the Australian Space Agency. Just before I sat down with Peter, Michelle took me on a tour of the factory and I was able to see some of the behind the scenes work going on towards their next rocket, the three-stage Ares, due to launch in the third quarter of 2022. Oh, and uh, watch for the moment where I managed to invent a completely new word. Compatry? Seriously, what the f***? As always, I love to include everything in my interviews, so I have placed a whole bunch of timestamps in the description below if you want to skip ahead and get to those bits that you really, really want to see. Now remember, now's that time to hit the subscribe button. You've got to smack that subscribe button you know, like, like you would if your rocket has wandered off nominal and needs to be brought down before it hurts anyone. It's that time. you got to grab yourself a cup of coffee or at least your favourite beverage and let's get started. Welcome, Peter. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, and thank you very much for making time in your schedule to talk to me. So I just need to know, um, my first question would be, as a kid or even as an adult, um, how did you end up working for an Australian rocket company like Gilmore Space? Oh, gosh, that's two questions, Josh, <laughs> as a kid. Well, some of us were born a long, long time ago. And I can, yes, I know. I can remember getting herded into the grade two classroom in 1969 and actually watching the Apollo um, mission with uh, Neil Armstrong working, walking on the moon. It was a, yeah. uh, a, a, an image in, of, the, of getting herded into the classroom and sitting there and having to behave yourself with 60 of your new closest classmates. <laughs> and uh, and in the middle of July, and uh, it was fantastic. So as a kid, I was kind of at the uh, at the, the beginning of the, uh, I guess, the proper space age. Yep. As a young adult, I, I was there when the first release of New Hope Star Wars came out. I was oh, there. <laughs> wow. Oh, I missed that one. <laughs> so, um, and as an adult, I uh, had several careers, but um, prior to this, I was working for a, a US uh, satellite company, uh, yep. Maxar Digital Globe, which oh, right. does the... Um, the high resolution imagery from space. Most people don't realize that when they open their Apple phone, yep. they're not looking at aerial imagery. That's actually taken from 630 kilometers out in space. Mm. And so when you think of the touch points in my life that uh, sort of led me to here, um, I think that there was probably some planned and some not so planned. But one of the things that I, I think really turned the corner for me was uh, during that career with uh, Maxar Digital Globe, uh, I was asked to be part of the Queensland Government's Space uh, Reference Committee. Oh, wow. And uh, I met Adam and James yeah. uh, Gilmore. And embarrassingly, I really hadn't met them before and didn't know they were around. And we got on like a house on fire and uh, we were promoting space to the Queensland government. We went through the parliamentary inquiry. We did uh, uh, major inputs into how the space strategy and policy was gonna be developed in Queensland as a committee. Yep. And to the credit of um, the Gilmores and myself at the time, there were five key areas that the strategy promoted, um, three of them came from the Gilmores and myself. Yeah. And the other two were manuf uh, manufacturing and STEM. So pretty, pretty uh, I guess, uh, effective 
use of our time being on that committee. And yeah. then my career came to an end with um, uh, with uh, Maxi Digital Globe after over eight, uh, over eight years, decided it was time to move. Uh, and the Gilmore's offered me a role. Oh, right. So that's how you got the head of yeah. sales. Oh, nice. You got yeah. offered a role. Excellent. All right. Yeah, because the, the next question would be, would be, how do you, did you actually um, purposefully line yourself up for this job? Um, and apart from um, making introductions and all that sort of stuff, was it somewhere you, you aimed to be? Oh, it was um, a function of... There were several opportunities for me to stay in the existing industry. I was yep. in um, remote sensing and data analytics, and it was time to move to a different industry. Mm. And I was looking through the options, and there were about um, 10 different options. And every time I got down to Gilmore Space, I had an involuntary smile come to my face, <laughs> and I went, I've got to do this. I've yeah. just got to do this. Yeah, I understand that. I understand that. Every time I talk about Gilmore Space, it's an involuntary smile as well. <laughs> There you go. So you were recently recognised as a spatial industry um, professional. Um, so what, what was the, what was that, and what does that mean exactly? Okay, the um, the award is uh, it's a fellow of the Surveying and Spatial Sciences Institute, mm -hmm. and that's something they give out. It's uh, to professionals that have contributed what they believe above and beyond to the industry. Mm -hmm. So I'd spent uh, twenty years in the industry and. Um, during different parts of my career in different uh, um, employments, um, we achieved a lot of things that most people did. But towards the end, I think, was where it really kicked on, where I was with uh, a satellite imagery company. We used um, the emergency responses and the crowdsourcing environments to respond to things such as the Samson flat fires, pinery fires, tropical cyclone PAM. Mm. Um, there was an industry award that we won for for that, um, which was not only in our class, but overall um, in the region. Uh, there was also the uh, tropical cyclone marsh here in Queensland and the deep water fires up uh, inside Bundaberg, I think they are. Yep. And so we used those responses and we also um, did another project, which was a f another first, which was uh, identifying every asset in Australia. Mm -hmm. So every asset. Yep. And we were the first continent to actually do that. This means that everything more than nine square metres was described. Wow. And where it was a community of more than 200 people, um, it included uh, complete 3D models. So the roof material, the swimming pools, solar panels, how tr tall are the trees, where the trees are, yep. uh, grass, impervious surfaces such as paths and roads. Wow. And roof material. And so we did this all from space. Wow. Okay, I can see how the space is actually coming into your career. So, <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. That's really, really interesting. How on track is Gilmore for 2022 um, launching, given that you've... It, it's only a couple of months away now. How on track is Gilmore um, towards towards launching something in 2022, which has been talked about in press? Okay, so I'm probably not the right person to ask. <laughs> That's okay. Um, <laughs> because I'm not turning the spanners, but yep. um, I am getting the contracts in. Yep. And we are very, very confident of a, uh, of a launch in 2022, around the middle of 2022. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. so yeah, this is fine. happening. We have uh, a uh, um, momentum and yep. we also have uh, a shared vision yep. and that vision is shared not just by uh, the company, the employees, but also uh, state and federal government shares yep. that vision that we should, be, uh, we should be taking Australia to space. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the other question that would lead into that as well is that how do you, how do you get companies on board um, to, to score those contracts? I mean, it's someone as the head of sales, how do you, how do you get those? Because you guys are busy building hardware and all that sort of stuff. How do you, it, um, like I've had a startup as well and it was the, trying to get convinced the argument and all that sort of stuff or give a convin convincing argument. So how do you, how did you do it? I mean, without giving away anything, how, was it oh. actually just by showing the manufacturing capability? Was it actually showing that um, things were being produced, the, the engine testing? How was it? How did, it, how did that come about? I think there's a couple of things to bear in mind, and that is um, we tend to think about what I can show somebody yep. that will be the right words in the right order or the right image in the right um, PowerPoint deck or something that is tangible that we can put on the table that convinces the, the customer to go and, and, yep. and work with us. 
uh, I think the approach is a little bit different. It's, it's actually understanding what their requirements are and where they fit in the, um, uh, you know, the sales curve of, you know, uh, if you've read um, Jeffrey Moore crossing mm. the chasm, for example, yep. um, are they early adopters, innovators, or are they in the laggards area? And it's matching our, our particular uh, place in that curve with the customer. It's a risk profile. Yep. So customers that are likely to be in a established competitors our portfolio of customers are unlikely to be in ours at this point because we haven't launched yet. Yep. Okay. But those customers are out there and they're looking for alternatives to the SpaceX's and what have you. Oh, wow. Okay. Awesome. Um, <laughs> that actually makes it for an interesting segue into the next question, which is, um, so Blue Origin, um, Virgin Galactic, SpaceX have all launched um, people, like um, citizens into space, more or less. Um, uh, for um, Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin, it's been above the common line. With SpaceX, it's been people into orbit. Have you got any um, ambitions to be an Aussie naught yourself? Me, oh, I would absolutely be thrilled if somebody would, even 10 minutes up there is enough for me, but yeah. uh, absolutely, I'll, uh, I'll be in the queue uh, as soon as I can. And what about what about Gilmore Space? Um, have you guys got any ambitions to actually absolutely. launch people? Yeah, I thought so. We had, this, we had this conversation online, I'm now doing it on camera. So yeah, so what, what does that look like for Gilmore Space? Um, and roughly timelines? Do you have any timelines? Or? Oh, okay. So, um, you know, this is going to have one of those clauses at the end, which is, <laughs> you know, uh, yep. everything that is said will be taken down, misquoted and held against you. Yeah, but, of course. Um, but if we talk about it in terms of why we think that uh, space exploration or human, uh, human space uh, is going to be in part of our future, mm -hmm. um, it is a natural progression. It is where a, a, a middle space country like Australia mm. has to aim for. Yep. It, is our, it is our place to be able to do that. That's the first thing. The second thing is that we are, offer something fairly unique. So if you look at Virgin Galactic, they also use a hybrid in, yeah, uh, engine. Yep. And the reason why they use that engine configuration is because it's incredibly safe and low risk. Yep. So when you, uh, if you have a catastrophic accident with a hybrid, you saturate the fuel with the oxidizer, it really can't burn any faster. Yep. But when you have a catastrophic accident with a bioprop, um, the two fuels, sorry, the fuel and the oxidizer uh, mix immediately and then you have a really quite a catastrophic outcome. Yep. So with our first stage in particular, which is 80% of your fuel load, yep. it's a hybrid engine. Mm. So we can remove 80% of the risk by going hybrids on our first stage. So with that heritage, mm. it makes us perfectly placed to take humans into space. Wow, that's a really, really good answer. <laughs> that's a really good answer. Actually, that leads me into a, um, a question that I don't have written down, um, which is how much knowledge do you have about rockets um, yourself? I mean, because you were talking there about having um, a, a lower risk profile by having a having a hybridized rocket engine, all that sort of stuff. How much do you know, or how much experience have you had with rockets before you joined in Gilmore Space? Oh, I don't think I could even consider myself in the shadow of the people that work here yes, as far as their experience. I mean, I carpool with um, someone who's got a PhD in rockets, you know. Wow. Um, <laughs> That's the person I want to talk to. <laughs> so um, I call it the first and last meeting of the day where I go and ask all the... In the morning, um, I sort of have a night to think about what the answers were. And in the afternoon, I get to ask all the dumb questions from the day. Yep. And so it's uh, a little bit of um, uh, trying to explain it to me, with you know, sometimes with crayons, but trying to explain <laughs> to me. The other times it's osmosis. But um, after two years uh, I have just by being around these people been able to get a I would say a literate knowledge mm -hmm. um, a, uh, to be able to at least have a, a sensible conversation but in addition I mean you're standing you're sitting in front of um, one of my own rockets wow so Toblerone there um, oh. um, was uh, <laughs> that wow. was uh, 
<laughs> that was careful. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be so, very careful. So um, uh, we joined the local rocketry association, um, and my uh, my journey was to actually get down and dirty with um, rockets for a while. And I still am a member of the Rocket Society here. Yep. And um, I did my level one and level two, and that's my level two rocket. Wow. Um, my level one rocket is here. Um, named after my wife, Robin. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, very, <laughs> nice, very nicely done. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and um, my level two rocket, um, I had a, uh, an experience out in the range where almost every one of these rockets was named, you know, Sky Scratcher or something, <laughs> yeah. something quite aggressive, right? And I said to my daughter, and I said, uh, what would you name the rocket? And she said, I don't know. Well, what's your favorite food? And at that particular time, it was Toblerone. And so hence, <laughs> I think it took me two weekends to build the rocket and another four to paint it. Oh, but there that's you are. awesome. <laughs> that's brilliant. So both of these rockets have flown, yep. and um, that was my level one certification, yep. and that was my level two certification. Wow, that's So amazing. I actually have a level two certification rocket license and and so what what um, altitude did that get to these ones well I think they went into about two and a half kilometers wow um, that's pretty impressive yeah so they had a sales <laughs> wow my god sorry they kind of blew me right out of the water that one but anyway all right um yeah um so obviously you can um one of the things is the um and this is another question I don't have written down as well um is that you can obviously get a career in the Australian space industry if you don't you don't have to know everything about rockets um so how would you go about getting a career with Gilmore Space well it depends what your interests are I mean the first and foremost thing that we will look for in an applicant mm. um, is a level of, of understanding, education, um, uh, you know, technical ability. Mm -hmm. But once you pass that, it comes down to attitude, yep. passion, and, you know, uh, the, the desire to get to space. And, I mean, you've walked through the, the main yeah. office here and there's nothing on their desks that doesn't say anything else about of them other than we're big space nerds so <laughs> join the club join the club <laughs> that's why i'm doing this entire channel we are supporting the australian government and the queensland government at um uh, in dubai yeah uh at space week and the international astronautical congress wow so I travel next Saturday, not this Saturday coming, next yep. Saturday, 16th. And we are, um, I'm over, uh, I'm in Dubai for two weeks supporting the government, but also meeting the, the space companies and space agencies mm. from around the world that converge wow. on the IAC. Yep. And so one of the things that, you know, I'm doing at the moment is absolutely filling a calendar and it's pretty hard because there's uh, a, once people started to know that I was going, yep. they're actually emailing me saying, when can we meet up? Wow. So it's uh, quite... That's a good problem to have. Yeah. <laughs> That's a really good problem to have. Any chance you want a, a space enthusiast to come along with you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that there's, um, uh, well, I think that there's a couple of things that led to this, and that is yep. uh, Gilmore Space has been around for almost 10 years. Yep. And so... I'm sure that there were moments when they first started where they were thinking, uh, what have I done? Yeah. But it's, you never, you never sort of go from one to 10 in one step. You have Correct. to go through every iteration. Every, every yep. iteration. And we're at the point now where we're less than 10 months from our proposed launch date. Yep. Um, there's enough evidentiary trail of engine tests, uh, components being assembled, and the government starting to support us in, in ways that have never been supported before, uh, that, have, that are giving those signals to the market and to the international market about how we're going to be presented and supported going forward. Now, this is very critical because the market wants the confidence of the local market before they're prepared to go and jump in with you. Yeah, I guess. correct. Yeah. And, um, and that's coming into play now. So it's wow. very, very good timing uh, in the market. Yeah, very exciting. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to be in Dubai. i uh, travelling on the 16th. Nice. And Good luck. Well, I hope it works out well. <laughs> the only thing I'm fearing is quarantine coming back. So. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so that's my next question, which was going to be, how are you going to go with COVID restrictions and stuff like that? Will you automatically be clapped into quarantine for two weeks when you get back? 
It depends. There was an announcement today by um, uh, Dr. Janet Young that yep. they're trialling uh, two weeks quarantine at home for a thousand people next week. Oh, um, right. So, so you might get the quarantine. Hopefully, I get to yeah. quarantine at home. There's a lot more outside and grassy areas at home than there is in the hotel room. <laughs> yes, there is. <laughs> On the back of the federal government's COVID response, Mm. Um, was the uh, Modern Manufacturing Initiative. Yes, exactly. And uh, so we have put together a proposal, um, including ourselves, 36 different companies. Mm -hmm. And they are national, so it's not just from Queensland, they're from uh, six of the states and, and territories, representation, um, plus two international companies that are prepared, uh, the international companies are prepared to move to Australia um, the national com companies are either going to become part of the supply chain or are working on projects together to participate in this program. Now, this is one of the, the moments in time where Australian uh, companies and the industry is starting to mesh with what government policy and government initiatives are. And so this is a very exciting time. Now, we haven't got any indication that we've been successful, yeah. but to get a proposal into the uh, into the government um, with 36 different companies prepared to contribute and to uh, support this initiative, I think is a major step for our industry. Yeah, that is. That's a massive step. And Gilmore is certainly leading the way with that one. Wow, <laughs> that's massive. Thank you very much, Peter, for your time today. It has been an absolute pleasure talking to you about everything that's going on inside Gilmore Space and I hope to talk to you again soon. I'm looking forward to it. Um, you, you live in the same state as me and it's only the second time we've met in two years, so <laughs> I know. something's got to change. <laughs> yeah, it does. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are you looking for more information about Gilmore Space Technologies? Then I've got you. You'll find links to everything you need to know in this comment section below. If you like this video and you want to see more on the Southern Hemisphere's very active and ever-evolving space industry, please remember to like this video, make a comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Liking and making a comment and subscribing to my YouTube channel lets YouTube know to share my channel with more people who, like you, love to find out more about the space down under. If you want to make sure you don't miss out on my latest videos, then make sure you also include hitting the notification button after you subscribe. Hitting the notification button lets you know when I've uploaded a new video or when I have a new live stream. These videos are actually supported by the kind people located around the world who support me on Patreon or who buy my merchandise. I'd like to thank each one of my patrons for their ongoing support as it allows me to continue to make these videos. Each patron gets exclusive insights and input into merchandise or gets a first look at upcoming new videos or upcoming live streams. You can check it out at patreon.com forward slash Josh Keegan. If Patreon is not for you, you can still show your support by getting your very own merch at shop.joshkeegan.com or by checking out the sponsorship page at joshkeegan.com. Thanks very much for watching The Space Down Under. And remember, stay caffeinated.